Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. So as many of you may know, we are independent artists, but we also have our own recording studio, where we record our own music and also music for other artists. So we thought it would be really helpful and inspiring to show you guys how we record our music, but also to give you guys tips on how you can record your music and also mix your music to a professional standard. Um, so if you like this kind of content and want to see more of this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so that you can get notifications of when we post other such videos. Um, so let's get into it. So here we are in our Pro Tools session and today we're going to show you how to mix a basic drum recording um, and to do this we're going to illustrate using our brand new single which is called I Want You. So firstly we have the the inner kick mic. So the first thing we want to do is this, let's just grab a basic EQ and see what we have. So without any EQ that sounds like So there's quite a lot of mid-range kind of mud that we don't need. Also a lot of bleed from the other drums. Um, so the first thing I will do and is try to get rid of a lot of that. So typically I know that there's a lot of mud going to happen in sort of 300 to 500 hertz. Um, this is generally dependent on the type of drum, uh, obviously the size of the kick drum itself. So let's show you what that mud will sound like. So let's go in around 300. And we will narrow the cue. So as you can hear that is just all sorts of muddy mess. So the first thing I will generally do um, is get rid of this. So we are at 330 hertz um, you see as you scope about you know, generally I like to go in around 350 and just get rid of that you know you can be quite aggressive with that I tend to sort of boost around get rid of about 10 decibels worth of that and keep the key pretty wide so as you can tell what that has what that has done has gotten rid of a lot of the mud and also focused the drum and so it tends to sound a bit more in your face rather than just a whole flubby mess. So the next thing I want to do, um, because I know this is the kick out mic, I know that I want to capture the sub frequency response of this drum. So typically on a kick drum your fundamental frequency is going to be around 60 hertz. Um, but I want to get that on the kick in mic. So on this one I want to get slightly lower than 60. Just to capture the sub. Um, so I will typically go on a pretty narrow cue and scoop around until I find where the frequency, where the sort of sub frequency is on the drum. You know, because every drum is going to be different. So you, you like to kind of just grab the sort of EQ and scope around until you find where the frequency is, what you want. So as you can hear on this, the sort of, the mini sort of, the main of the drum really comes in around 40 hertz, which is really low. Um, so the first thing I will do is boost that. Um, typically I will give it around three to six um, DB just to really sort of hammer the home the sort of the chest sort of sub frequency so so there you go you've got quite a lot of low frequency content the next thing I will do which is quite weird um, for a kick drum is I will sort of put a high pass filter on to get rid of any just unnecessary low. So I will typically use this at around 30 hertz. So as you get a nice gentle slope sort of leading into where you boost it. Um, so the next thing I will want to do 
is I will sort of grab sort of in around sort of one to three kilohertz to get a bit of the the attack into the drum. So once again, I will grab a an EQ and sort of scope this around until I find a frequency that I like. So that sort of in around there has that sort of a nice attack. So once again, I will go to about 6 dB and boost that. So what you have already is a sort of kick out mic that sort of emphasizes those really low sub frequency and also gets a bit of the attack into the drum. Uh, next we move on to the the alternate sort of kick in mic which is the condenser mic. So with this mic I want to get something different than the kick out mic. I want to get quite a lot more attack and also move the fundamental frequency um, sort of closer to where that the drum's fundamental is which is as I said typically around 60 hertz. So once again first thing I'll do is get rid of that sort of low frequency guns that just clouds up the mix. So let's see where the, that lies within this one. So you can hear already there's a lot of um, bleed and just muddiness here. So the first thing I will do is I will get rid of a lot of that. And you can hear already the kick drum has like sort of cleaned up a lot. Um, the next thing I will do is, as I said, grab with well, a fundamental frequency to get a lot of the beater. And let's see where that lies. It should lie around 60 hertz. Generally, just scoop around until you find so, yeah, it's in around 60 hertz. So, let's boost that down to a sensible level. So, there we go, but with 60 B at 60 hertz gives it that sort of nice weight. High pass to about 40 hertz. This just cleans out the rumble and any low frequency stuff that you don't need with this particular mic. Um, so let's see, the next thing we want to do is get some attack on the drum. Um, typically, um, this will be around anywhere between 1 to 5 kilohertz. So let's see where that lies. Once again, just grab a Grab an EQ, pretty lower the Q a bit so as you can isolate frequencies and then just scope around until you see the frequency you like. And here you can tell there's quite a lot of beat organ on there which is exactly what we want. So, as you can hear, we have a kick drum that has a lot of low end and it's very focused because we've cut a lot of mud out and it also has a lot of beater attack um, which will help it stand out within a pretty busy mix. Uh, next we move on to the main kick in mic and it will generally tend to mirror the alternate kick mic. Um, but it'll just have a bit more, a slightly different sound to it. So once again, first thing we do, we've, we've got sub frequencies covered, and uh, we will generally high pass to about 40 hertz, because we don't need it, because we've got the other mic doing it. And then we will seek to find the fundamental, which we know from the other mic, is around 60 hertz. Um, so let's play that and see if it is.
Yeah, so it's around 60 hertz. All right. So once again, uh, we've got that sort of weighty attack. Next thing we want to do is cut right a lot of that mud in the sort of low mids. Um, once again, go in around 350, which is mostly your, your kind of magic frequency to get rid of a lot of that mud within a drum kit. Um, so let's see if that is true. Yeah, there we go. There's that nasty beach ball sound. So we get rid of that. Open the cue a little wider. So as you can hear, um, it focuses, as soon as I removed a lot of the, that low sort of low range mud, it really focuses the drum more. Um, one of the common misconceptions about sort of low sort of instruments, as in like bass or a kick drum, um, in this particular thing, example, we're talking about a kick drum. So your common sort of thing is to, you, you want to add a lot of lows. So you, you just find all the low frequencies you can and you're going to hope that that's going to result in a really weighty kick drum. But in actual fact, it's getting rid of mud and stuff you don't need that will focus the sound of the drum. And that's what you want to do. Um, instead of just adding low frequency on top of low frequency. Because what you're going to do is, once you start adding in more instruments, it's just going to cloud up the mix completely. And once again, what we want to do is get some of the attack of the drum. Um, and we know from previous examples, this is going to be in the round, sort of... Uh, it's about two to three, sort of, will be one. But there's also, in the round, four to about six, you will get another, sort of, attack of the drum. So let's get the first one. So we don't want that. We don't want that beach ball sound. But we want that thumb. So let's take it down to a reasonable level. And generally on most sort of kick drums there will be a second frequency, which is about here. So your sort of your four to six will give you that full on click sound. So a lot of you are probably saying why are you adding so much high frequency to a kick drum? Um, once again once you start adding instruments especially bass and guitars your kick drum will disappear pretty quickly so you need a lot of attack to, to actually hear the drum as well as feel it. So in this case we have, as I explained, we have three mics. So the beauty of having this for me, this system of sub-mixing each element, is you can actually customize your own kick sound. So with, with just the kick in and the kick out, this is what you so this is what you get. So just the kick in. So you have a lot of low end but you also have a lot of attack so as soon as you add in the kick out to that so when you hear the, the drum sort of starts to get a bit of weight behind it um, so that alone is a is a good sounding kick sound and generally most engineers will do your kick in and kick out and that is your kind of kick drum sound but what I'd like to do is add in this additional mic which is a condenser and it sort of just adds a bit more sort of weight to it. So let's play it as it is. So you can hear that we have a lot more attack. So what I can do is balance that to my preference. So that the attack starts to go away.
Yes, that's kind of what I want. The beauty of having this group idea on a kick drum is to EQ them all together as a whole. Um, so what we have here, once again, we have that sort of low mid stuff that we don't want. You know, once you add all those mics together, you're going to get a lot of low range frequencies you don't want. So let's illustrate that. You know, so we want to cut that out straight away. So that's around 350 again. So that focuses the drum. The next thing we do is we do a very narrow cut around 100 hertz. Um, this is in reference to the rest of the mix. But mostly 100 hertz is generally the fundamental frequency of most bass guitars. Obviously depending on the type of bass, the register at which the bass is playing in. But generally it's kind of a, a go-to point. So we are trying to craft room for the bass guitar to, to live. Because we, we want to balance the bass guitar and the kick drum. So as both are heard and there's space for each one. So I will tend to do that little narrow cut around 100 hertz. So let's hear what that does. So you hear that it's a very tubby sound. So by cutting that, just a little, not too much. So we leave a little gap for the bass guitar to live. And the last thing I like to do is add a bit of sort of warmth or distortion to that just to, get, just to help it cut through and also add a bit more sort of fundamental at 60 hertz so i'm boosting 60 hertz at 3 3 db at 60 hertz and also a bit more attack at 4 and i'm also boosting the input uh, this is a sort of model of the 1173 eq channel and on that as you drive the input it adds a harmonic distortion that just helps it sit in the mix. So let's see what that does. So in, out. So there's quite a substantial difference with it in. It kind of cleans up and adds this harmonic distortion. Um, so let's show you that. So this is an out. And this will be it back in. So you'll really hear it cleans up a lot and it really focuses the attack of the drum. They're not actually doing much processing on the the snares here. Uh, but what we're doing is we're using this kind of, as we know with a kick drum, we're using the three mics as a kind of EQ. You know, as we balance the different mics on the, the snare, we are essentially sort of EQing the sound of the snare by balancing them together. So first of all, we have the bottom mic. So, yeah, typical bottom mic. So you hear the underneath of the drum, which is the rattling of the snares themselves. Um, that was a Shure 57 underneath the snare and this was phase matched in terms of the same distance and the same location was a snare top mic which is also a 57 uh, which helps with the, the phase issues within. So this is the snare top So as you can hear, um, it's a snare and it's quite a big snare um, and it is tuned quite low because for this particular track we wanted a very witty snare. Um, we didn't want that sort of piccolo -y kind of snare vibe. So yeah, so it's kind of no tuned, a lot of bass content going on and for a lot of weight. Um, so yeah, so that's the top. Uh, next up we have is this side snare. So this is actually the side of the snare and this is a condenser mic on the side. So 
what it tends to give you is a lot of the uh, the shell resonance, but also quite a lot of attack, um, as the the mic's kind of placed, um, just sort of looking over the top of the drum, um, sort of looking at the shell, um, so therefore you get a lot of um, sort of beefiness, if you want to use that word. Um, so by blending each of these mics in, you can kind of EQ the sound of the snare. Um, this is, once again, the beauty of using this kind of sub-mix sub sort of, um, of each drum. So you can do this technique. So let's snare top. You know, and we add in the shell mic. You know, you can hear it's adding in a bit of weight. Yep, so we've got a witty snare with plenty of attack. Add in the bottom. That's what we don't want. That's a rattly snare, which is not what we want for this track. So that's kind of the snare sound I want for this track. Um, it's quite a lot of low end, um, but we're going to get rid of that. Um, once again with this uh, submaster idea um, so first thing we're going to do is grab an EQ and this is quite a weird technique this is kind of learnt off a sort of from working on an analog desk uh, this is like the what I call the solid state logic trick um, first thing I will do is I will boost in around 200 Hertz and that gives you this sign which will be a lot of weight So you have a lot of weight behind it. Take it off. You know, so automatically we've gained a lot of weight. So that's that's quite a gentle, quite a wide sort of cue, sort of boosting around 200 hertz, uh, just about four dB of boost. That will give you the that sort of weight behind the snare. Next up, we actually use a copy of the 1173 uh, once again uh, and that is this so what we're doing once again is adding quite a lot of input drive once again to get that sort of harmonic distortion and unbelievably next thing we're doing is grabbing the EQ at 220 Hertz and boosting it again um, by about 4 dB and then from EQ and hundreds of snares over the last lot of years, I generally know that most snares, the actual sort of high sort of frequency aspect of the snare to make it stand out of the mix is generally seven seven kilohertz roughly, and then I've also added a little bit of um, twelve kilohertz just to get a bit of air around the drum. So let's hear what that does. That's right, let's take it up. So yeah, it's quite a difference. Um, once you take off uh, the additional EQ, um, you will hear that it starts to sound muddy. Um, that's because I'm boosting quite a lot of high end, which helps make it sit out of the mix. So let's hear that without again. With. You know, so there's quite a lot of, you know, thump to the drum that way. Um, I'm also high passing to about 80 hertz. Uh, that gens generally tends to clean up a lot of the mud from the, that we don't want and keeps it out of the way of the kick drum, um, which we will put in and we'll let, let you hear what the two sound like together. So yeah, as you can hear, they're, they're occupying, they have their own little space, and you can hear them all sort of very clear. 
Um, yeah, so this, this, I would highly recommend this EQ. The hi hat. You know, so the first thing I want to do with a hi hat is get rid of stuff that is not needed. So let's listen to this without any processing. Yeah. So, so the first thing I will do is grab a high pass filter and get rid of all that low end that we don't need because we have a we have a fairly good level on the kick drum a lot of bass and we want to clear out all that mud so the rest of the mix isn't compromised so let's take that up until we hear a difference You know, so you can take that up right up to 300 hertz, which without any shame. Um, so next up, also adding this, you know, it's a feature of a lot of my mixes, the 1173, because I like this sort of mix in that kind of analog format. Um, first thing I do is just boost a little 3K, um, just add a little bit of 12, just to sort of make it stand out a bit. Let's see what that does. And without yeah so as you can hear it focuses it and you can really hear the stick hitting the hi-hat next up we have the right, symbols so first off is the overheads so let's play these without any processing um, I love the sound of these overheads So first thing you will notice is once again they are panned to drummer's perspective. So you will hear the hi-hat on your left ear. Um, just a personal choice for this one. Um, and you will hear that it captures quite a, it's a great picture of the whole kit. Um, you know, it's very balanced. So let's hear that. You know, it's a great sounding set of overheads. Um, but what we did with this one was, um, when mixing overheads and rooms, your standard sort of idea is, what do you want your drum kit to do? You know, typically in jazz and some rock sort of things, you will have a lot of overheads going on. Um, so you'll have quite a, You'll boost certain lows and certain mid range, but in this aspect, I wanted quite a poppy sound, so I wanted to let the kick drum, which is quite beefy, and the snare and the toms, all handle the close mic sort of thing and be very punchy. So we didn't want a lot of the low range, low aspects of things. We didn't need that. So first thing we did was get rid of it. Um, so we have high passed all the way to 200. So let's hear what that does. So this is with an in. You know, and then we start high passing. You know, so you will hear the kick drum disappeared and also the initial the beef of the snare. So with, without, I've also added a sort of shelf EQ just to boost the high end. So once again, this is a personal preference, um, depending on what your recording needs. Um, I I wanted the overheads and also the room mics just to add a bit of ambience and not. I didn't want to hear the kick drum really or the weight of the snare. 
so I wanted to clean everything up. So I also, once again, 350 hertz, just dipped that out. Yeah, so just cleans everything up. Yeah, so that was the overheads. Next up, we have the rooms. These are all room mics. So let's, so as you can see, that was the symbols for the overheads. So let's select the room subgroup. Okay, so let's play them. So this is it without any processing. Once again, very witty, a great picture of the kit. Um, but once again, I didn't need any any of that low frequency stuff. So once again, it's exactly the same EQ uh, without the high, extended high. So I really wanted to use the room just to add room sound, really, a reverb, a natural reverb, if you will. So let's see what that sounds like. That's with the EQ. This is without. So the first thing you'll notice is the kick drum starts to come through and also the weight of the snare again, but I didn't want that, so I got rid of it. So let's hear that again. You know, it's a, it's a big shock, but with mixing, you have to remember the big picture. You know, once you put everything else in, things are going to get muddy very quickly. Next up, we have Smash. This is what it says in the tin. This is smashed through a compressor. Let's hear it without anything. I know. It's pretty much obliterated, but it's just to add a bit of excitement. Once again, you hear a lot of kick drum and all the rest of it. Didn't want that. I just wanted to hear that distortion, so let's hear it with EQ. That's out. You know, it sounds great without, but within the aspect of a mix, that's going to get really muddy really fast and just go to cloud up your mix completely. But it would be great if you've got like a, if you've got like a, a section of the song that has like a drum break, where it's just the drums and you really want that cross sign, it would be great for that. So let's hear that again with the EQ. So it just cleans it up and sort of still has that aggressive sound and adds a bit of excitement. So, so let's hear that everything together and you'll hear how the kit sounds very, you can hear every aspect of it. You know, and it still has that excitement and roomy sound. So. You know, so yeah, so hopefully um, you find this useful. It's quite quite a long video, but um, I really wanted to show you the the process of mixing a full kit and how the overall process is about creating space within the kit, and hopefully it will inspire your recordings. Um, I say if you want, I can go in in more in depth with regards to this um, and see what what fits. Um, the next video will actually be, we're actually going to break down the whole, the rest of the track, um, which is quite substantial, as you can see. A lot of tracks, a lot going on. Which is why, as we said, we, we, we gutted out the um, the overheads to, uh, to give us some room. Um, you know, so that that's kind of, you know, because within mixing we have sort of a, think of mixing as like a, a canvas, like a, like a painting canvas, um, you know everything can't be huge. You know you have to have you have to have light and shade and areas of space. 
and create room. Um, so in the context of a recording, you can't have a humongous drum sound and a humongous guitar sound and a humongous bass sound. You know, something's got to give. So in this case, I got it out the uh, the overheads in order to to gather some space using the overheads just as a as a sense of space to give the kit some space and room around the kit. Um, whereas if I was doing a jazz recording, I might actually work the opposite way where I would, you know, start with the overheads and get a good overhead sound and then blend the the close mics in to create more of a natural sound. Whereas this track is, as I say, quite pop rock sort of feel. So we're all about adding weight and feel and, you know. So yeah, so that's kind of how to mix a drum kit. And hopefully this was helpful. Um, leave some comments in the comment section below about anything you want me to go into more in depth. And I will see you in the next one. Have fun making your own music and make sure you share it with us because we're all about building a community here. Um, so hope you enjoy it. I'll see you soon.